This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Rue Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Lillesand, uh, well, outside of Kristiansand. But today we're gonna look at something really cool. This is, um, well, actually, I don't know too much about it. I just know that you are from Revolve. Yeah. So, uh, can you please uh, tell a little bit more about yourself and what this is? Sure. So, my name is Johan. I'm from uh, Revolve NTNU Trondheim. Uh, we are a Formula student team uh, from Norway. And um, we're here in Lillesand testing our, uh, our electric driverless car uh, before we're going to competitions in Europe. So, this is, well, it looks like a racing car. Yeah. But, so, yeah. so, this is like, uh, it's inspired by Formula One and then we're making it for students. Uh, so, um, we're a team uh, where we have a driverless project and a, a manual driven project. Um, this is the driverless car um, where we basically make a race car and try to uh, make it drive by itself. Um, so it's an electric car with four motors, one in each uh, wheel hub. Yeah, you can see them here. So they're directly connected. Huh? Yeah. No then, gearbox. Uh, the gearbox is inside, so it's very tightly packed. Okay. Um, and then there's a computer on the side of the vehicle. Usually it's kind of hidden, but now we're, uh, we're just testing, so it's uh, shown outside. Uh, and then uh, in the back we have uh, packed inside the monocoque is uh, the inverter and the accumulator or battery pack. Uh, so we're running, it's about seven kilowatt hours and 600 volt. Uh, so it's a pretty, yeah, uh, there's a lot of power. So the motors then, the quad motor, how much power is it in each motor? Uh, so the, the motors can do 21 newton meters torque uh, and then there's four of them, so uh, that's also quite a lot. And on the wheels, uh, we have a about 15 gear ratio. Uh, so it's about uh, a thousand newton meters torque in total. Wow. Uh, which is uh, quite a lot. And see the water is flowing, so you have a water cool uh, motor and inverter. Yep. Eh? So the, the motors are water cooled, the inverter is also water cooled. You can see it goes like from inside the vehicle. And mm. then also the, the processing unit of the, the driverless computer is also water cooled. But the coolest part about this is the driverless stuff. We're that, gonna see it yeah. soon. Yeah, uh, so we just finished our brake check with the driver and now we're about to start uh, driving autonomously. We're still testing, so it probably will hit some cones. Oh. But uh, uh, yeah, we're just making the final preparations for, for competitions and pushing the vehicle. But I was, yeah. I was wondering, how many sensors do you have here? So we're running on one LiDAR. So this is an uh, Hesai LiDAR, uh, it's a P40, so there's 40 channels uh, of LiDAR and then it uh, rotates inside and you get a point cloud out and it's about like a million points per second which the computer then uh, processes to find out where the cones are uh, of, and then we're running different modules inside the computer to understand where the vehicle is and uh, basically do the mapping. Uh, and then the planning, and then the control of the of the car. Um, but you actually, are you? Do you have any cameras? Uh, there's no cameras. So we found out we don't need cameras. <laughs> so simpler is is better. Um, the lidar is really good. Um, and then for this purpose, yeah, the lidar is is perfect because the cones are basically what defines the track. Uh, so the goal is to hit as few cones as possible and drive as fast as possible. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I think the guys want to start driving. Yep. So I want to see it in action. <laughs> Let's hope it works. Yeah. All right, so that's the operator. He has a remote kill switch. In case uh, the, car, the, <laughs> the car runs wild, he can just stop it and it will lock all the four wheels. So he's now preparing to uh, go without driver <laughs> this is cool
Yeah, so right now we're back in the pit area kind of. Uh, so they just have to uh, do some changes to parameters on the, on the car. So you just connect it to the computer, which is basically a pretty standard gaming computer. Uh, yeah. So they have, can we look at the screen, what's going on over there? Or uh, I think so. Yeah, so right now you're seeing the basically live LiDAR point cloud map. Oh, if you stand in front of the... Can we see if uh, someone is moving in front of the... So if I'm hey. uh -huh. moving in front... Try to understand which... Okay. So this must be the center of the car. Okay, I'm going to... No camera, only LiDAR. Interesting. So... Last year, we had uh, two LiDARs and two cameras. Um, sometimes it can be a, an advantage to have cameras because you can see the colors of the, of the cones a lot better because uh, each side is delimited by cones of different colors. Um, but we realized we don't need, we don't need them. Uh, the LiDAR is so good and we get um, really precise measurements from the, from the LiDAR. So, uh, the, the car, the, is it pre-mapped on this track or...? The car doesn't know the track before we start. So it basically is set on the start, uh, the orange cones, uh, and then the, cone, the car has to find its own way through the, through the track. Uh, and of course the goal is to get as fast as possible through, uh, and without hitting cones. Uh, so does the car uh, learn the track then? Yeah, so when we go... The, the most challenging part is the first round, and then when we're going 10, uh, 10 laps, uh, the subsequent one after we know the track, uh, after driving the first one, uh, they're much easier, and then we can basically increase the speed. Um, and then we can also change our control methodic. Uh, so right now we're running different control algorithms while we're, uh, when we know the track and when we don't know the track. Uh, it is basically to optimize the, how we travel through the through the curves, uh, but it's uh, it's difficult and it's not perfect yet. So we're taking off the seat now. This is yeah. so this is the seat, and it's uh, what's in front of the the battery pack or the accumulator, which we call it. Um, and the seat is uh, uh, made from carbon fiber, and also acts as a fire firewall. So it's a uh, Kevlar and aluminum, which act as the, the firewall, basically protecting the, the driver uh, from an eventual fire, uh, if that happens. And then here we can see the, the battery pack, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we call it accumulator, right? Yes. The so battery pack is the lower one. And uh, the battery pack is the lower one, the green one. And then the inverter is uh, placed above it, where you can see the water running into the inverter. Mm. Uh, so the the, uh, the accumulator feeds the inverter, which then feeds the four motors. So right now we're uh, flashing new code to the uh, one of the control cards, which uh, controls the autonomous system. Uh, so we're basically always iterating on the code, and this is uh, this is the system that sends uh, set points to the inverter, which basically makes the car go forward. But it also runs lots of checks uh, to ensure that the vehicle is in a safe state. Uh, and if it notices that anything is bad, like the brake pressure is, is bad or the pneumatic uh, pressure is, is bad, then it will send a shutdown signal and uh, all the high voltage uh, uh, systems will lose power. Hmm. Um, but you want to show this one? Right? Yeah, so this is a sample of... Uh, of one of the panels of the monocoque. So the, the chassis of the car is a monocoque design. Uh, so it's, um, it's made out of carbon fiber uh, and uh, aluminum honeycomb. So there's a sandwich structure where the, we first lay um, layers of carbon fiber and then we, uh, we basically glue a sheet of honeycomb. Uh, it's like a really strong pattern uh, of aluminum and it's also super light 
and on the other side again the same carbon fiber there yeah so when you have the carbon fiber sheets glued together with this uh, uh, honeycomb in the middle uh, it gets super strong so this was uh, tested uh, until it broke kind of, kind of to prove that uh, the structure is is as good as we designed it to be uh, and the entire monocoque is made out of these kinds of, of panels uh, of different thicknesses and so the strongest area of the monocoque is uh, around the driver to protect the driver so side impact intrusion is like uh, super strong Okay, it's been a couple of hours now. Um, seems like there are some problems with the, with the car, right? Yeah, so we drove a couple of uh, laps, but then we struggled to get the high voltage on, on the car. So we're just uh, troubleshooting. We tried to fix some um, integrated circuit boards, um, but we have to switch them out and it's taking some hours. Um, so we hope to be back uh, driving in a couple of hours. Um, yeah, but for now we're uh, in pit. And we can see at least that uh, now we the battery pack has been taken out. Right? Yeah, so we took out the battery pack and then we took out the inverter, and then we uh, uh, changed some some things in the inverter. Um, so the what we pack. originally thought was wrong, it wasn't it wasn't uh, the issue. But this is the inverter, huh? Yeah, this is an inverter. Mm. Um, so it's one of the safety critical systems that kind of uh, didn't want to play. Uh, so uh, it's it's good that the safety features work when when they do, uh, but uh, they're important to fix before we can continue driving. Well, but unfortunately, um, I have to drive back home now. Uh, I, I, this is around three four hours away from home, so it's going to be late if I stay here too long. Yeah, it was really cool that you came. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can come visit us in Trondheim uh, when you come by sometime. Yes, absolutely. So you guys have also another car, what is a newer version or something, right? Yeah, so, so this car was made originally in 2018 and then we've iterated on it and put the driverless uh, equipment to, to make it autonomous. Uh, but every year we make a new uh, car that's uh, driven manually. So our uh, other project is now in Hungary and they're meeting us up in Germany to participate in the in the German Formula Student Competition. So hopefully uh, things will go good uh, next week when we compete there. Yeah, so you also go into the competition, right? Yeah. So this is the final preparation for the competition. Well, good luck. Thanks. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you guys are interested, uh, we should maybe check out the other car also. Maybe I should go to Trondheim. So yeah, let me know what you think. And if you like this or not, unfortunately, we didn't see too much driving. But at least we saw, we have seen the car and you saw a little bit, of, well, one lap until it crashed into one of the cones. Uh, but that happens all the time, right? Or yeah, hopefully uh, when it's perfect, it won't hit any cones. But uh, for now, there's some cones. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.